Hello, my name is Opal Singleton. I am the president and CEO of Million Kids, and this is a Million Kids Insider Alert. Please share this with everyone that you know. This particular Insider Alert is a little heavier than I, many of the things that I carry, but it's an important message, and I'm asking you to share it with me. If you know of anybody who wants to also receive these insider alerts, please have them sign up at millionkids.org. What I'm going to talk about today is very difficult, but in the last few weeks, I've seen case after case of young people that end up taking their own lives, committing suicide, sometimes within a matter of hours after they have discovered that they are being sextorted. And that just tears at my heart because it's just so unnecessary. So I want to share that with you today so that we can take this on and stop this so that never again would a beautiful young person lose their life when it's so unnecessary. One of the things that strikes me about the cases I'm going to show you in this episode is just how vivacious, how intelligent, how successful these young people are. These are not people who are hiding in mom's basement, you know, living in video games. No, these are well-rounded young people, and many of them have been sextorted by offshore organizations. In this case, Tevin Tobler, he was from Utah, an outgoing man, never had any signs of any kind of uh, depression or mental illness. He was sextorted by a group out of the Ivory Coast, and he ended up taking his own life. The same is true of these next three people that we're going to look at. Now, as I've read the articles, the families have kind of come together. They didn't know each other before, but they're joining together to speak out. And I want to help them get that message out, which is why I'm taking your important time today. So let's start off with this kid. Can you believe it? Does this kid like look like the most positive uh, kid you could ever have? A son every mother is proud of, and I, I read all the articles of the Bashford family, and uh, they are just in so much grief over this, and they want his words, his message out there, that so it will never again happen to another person. He was only 15 years old. He's absolutely well-rounded. He had a solid family. Uh, they, had, they even had rules about how to handle the cell phones where you you don't even get it until like 11 o'clock in the morning. And he got kind of sucked in to this thing where he sent a photograph uh, to someone that he thought he could trust. They immediately wanted $3,500, okay? This beautiful young man committed suicide just hours after the sextortion began. He had a brief back and forth with a Facebook user. He tried to raise whatever money that he could. It wasn't enough. He had opened the Facebook account two months before just to look through snowmobiles for sale. He had accepted a friend request from someone posing as someone else. And in fact, his two siblings and at least 15 other young people had received the same uh, friend request. Now, the scammer allegedly posed as his girlfriend online, later warned the teenagers personal pictures would be published on social media and shared with family and friends if he did not complete the transaction, meaning coming up with the money. He hadn't appeared distressed at all the morning of his death. He went to the dentist. He uh, had braces put on. He fed the family cow, cows, okay, and he spent time with his relatives, his family. Uh, the threatening messages, though, began around March 30th, and hours later, uh, he uh, ended up taking his own life. This, the father is saying, or the mother is saying, this came down to a really split second of madness in a young brain that couldn't process the finality of the decision that he was making. And, you know, my heart grieves for the family of this individual. He said, I want to figure out how the devil was able to prey on a child in such a short time. And mother, that's why we're doing this. I myself am asking that question. This is not the first one 
This is not the only one where it happens very quickly, especially in males. And that just gets my attention. We must take action to educate our kids and stop this. They continue to bombard him and they finally broke him, according to his father. He thought the only way out was uh, to do what he ended up doing because he felt like he had embarrassed himself and the family. They continued to bombard him in there and he thought there was no other way out. He, they ended up finding him. He had ended up uh, shooting himself before it was over. Look at this beautiful young lady, Shailen Dixon. This girl is smart as a whip, okay? And she died by a self-inflicted gunshot wound of sextortion. Get this, her sextortionist was from Pakistan. She was on the honor roll of a criminal justice program. How sad that is. But she was blackmailed. She was 18 years old. Uh, she did a self-inflicted gunshot wound. She wrote a note to her family telling her family that she loved them and that she had shared sensitive photos of them and somewhat with someone online who threatened to share the photos publicly if she did not send the money. As a result, they began to probe this case. It took them about a year later, but look at this. She was being sextorted by two people from Pakistan and they ultimately were arrested. As they went in there, the perpetrators resided out of the country. They said they're not small time criminals. These are organized crime rings that are preying on our children. I often, when I do training to law enforcement, I show one that was originating out of the Philippines. Look at this incredible young man, Jordan DeMay. Popular, smart, you know, everybody loved him. He was a sport athlete uh, and he ended up taking his own life. And this took place within only six hours from uh, Thursday morning to, excuse me, Thursday evening to Friday morning. They tried to extort $1,000 out of him. Uh, he only had $300. They weren't going to be happy with that. But I want you to see something that is typical of this kind of thing, especially if you're working with an overseas ring. They told him that they had all of his Facebook contacts and more other social media, and they would send his nude photo out on that. They said they'd start to send the picture out if he couldn't pay them any more money. He said, okay, you win. I'm going to kill myself. And they said, Go for it. According to police, just six hours after the contact was first made by Twitter, he ended up taking his own life. The Twitter photo showed a beautiful girl. Soon he had sent Jordan a nude picture, a compromising picture back to her. Then conversation quickly changed and it became a situation of blackmail. We treat it as a teenage suicide right from the start, but they began to investigate it. And that the nude picture sent to uh, a friend of Jordan's, what had happened here is that this friend knew that Jordan had committed suicide and she also received that nude photo. So she went to the police. And what this is what we've really got to teach our kids Stop immediately. Do not take this on yourself. These people are organized criminal rings. You must go to police and go quickly and get these young people counseling quickly. But of course, first you have to know what's going on. And that's why it's so important to use these cases to sit down with your child. Do not allow their lives to be lost in vain. Sit down with your child. She said she told the perpetrators after this girl got the photos that Jordan had ended up killing himself and they replied good and she hung up, but she went to the police. Here's one more and then we're going to close this out on how to handle it. Evan McDaniel, 14 years old. Look at this kid. He looks like a riot. He looks like he has a great sense of humor but he died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound just hours after receiving these threats online. He died by suicide after getting the aggressive uh, emails on his phone. 
His family said he was happily and laughing and having a good time. He woke up the next day uh, to messages who he thought was a beautiful woman. They threatened to share that photo they claimed they had of him. The predator told Evan his life is over. Get this. I mean, this is brutal, folks. They were going to share the image with his friend on Instagram, and they had already shared it with his sister and brother. According to the parents, the message said, you might as well take a gun and shoot yourself in the head because your life is over. And that's exactly what he did. The family said they're a normal family with strict rules about social media. They hide, they take family vacations. The family rule is that there's no access to a cell phone each day until 1130 a.m. Well, the threats started rolling in sometime after he went to bed and it turned in his phone. Uh, they were progressing. They were elevating because he wasn't responding. The inner Instagram user did file, uh, finally uh, share a photo with his sister and also with someone I think is his cousin. Lillian then never opened. The cousin thought it was a joke. But Evan, known for his modest, modesty and shyness, you know, sending an intimate photo would be a joke for them. It's still unclear if he had actually sent any intimate photos or videos as none had been found. It's just known that the Instagram user said they had photos of Evan and threatened him. Evan got up the next day. They drank their coffee. He worked out. He did his schoolwork. He spoke with his counselor about his class schedule. His mother went out on a walk before uh, running some errands and his dad was at home in his office working. It was about 11.20 in the morning when he got his phone back, which is likely when he saw these threats. He said, just like Riley and Shailen, the moment took him like a flash panic and worry. He began to look for his dad's truck keys because he knew there was a firearm inside of that truck. Mrs. McDaniel got home shortly before 11.45. She was greeted at the door by her daughter. They're talking about her school schedule and what to do. The mother's telling the daughter to take the trash out. When she took the trash out, there uh, Evan Daniel laid in the backyard and he had taken his own life by gunshot. The father called the neighbor and they began CPR. But it wasn't until they turned him over, they realized what had happened. It wasn't until a month after his death when an investigator called their home to show them that Evan had been in contact with someone on Instagram. Evan's parents said they hadn't seen the messages and indicating a demand was made by blackmailers given the nature of the threats they uh, believe something was asked for. They don't know what it is. It appears that he came into contact with these people on a different app, which is very, very common parents, which could have been when the demands were made. Listen to this. The investigation continues and the Instagram user was eventually traced back to the Philippines, which stonewalled the investigation. The Philippines, this young man was being haunted and uh, harassed from the Philippines. This is heavy stuff, folks. I know this is heavy stuff, but please talk to your children. If they're in their teens, sit down and share these kids' life with them. You know, you always think it's not going to happen to you, that you'll be smart enough that this won't happen to you. But it happened to every one of these kids were exceptionally bright, exceptionally popular, exceptionally talented. Pedophiles will use multiple apps. So understand that parents, when you're looking at it, talk with your children that if you're talking to someone and they move you to a different app, run for your life. Never, ever, ever send a naked photo, even to your closest confidant online. You do not know where that's going to end up. These pedophiles will use photos and videos of other victims to traumatize new victims. And they will keep their word about sending those photos out. And you will never be able to have enough money to pay them. So the thing we have to share with our kids is, first of all, don't. But if you do, trust us enough that we can help you walk through it. These pedophiles will never stop on their own. First of all, that child was probably talking to an entire ring of pedophiles and not knowing it. So you have to assume they have multiple uh, victims 
and you need to go to law enforcement. Here's some takeaways, okay? Do not tell the pedophiles you're going to the police. Do not get involved and start shaming your child. Assume that removing the device from the child will be safe is not true. Do not make that assumption. If you see any kind of change in behavior, and in these cases, the parents did not realize what was going on. To their credit, it wasn't something that they just chose to look the other way. These are involved parents. And that's why I'm making this, this uh, distribution for you. Because I look at these, these kids are smart, they know what they're doing, and the parents are doing everything right. And yet we still lost these, pre lost these precious lives. Assume, never assume the child is safe if they just stop talking to the pedophile. These guys never have one victim and they never quit. Go to the police. Do not delete the photos. Do screenshot them and don't show those photos to everyone you know. Keep them very, very quiet and go to the police. Research has indicated that there's thousands of kids a day being sex extorted and almost 60% of them will actually go out and try to meet up with that pedophile to get that photo back and they get violated. And by the way, it's not just photos, it's videos, it's live streaming. So many kids get caught up in gaming and they don't realize that live streaming works both ways. So keep an eye if you see a change of behavior in your child, okay? Their school grades drop. Maybe they quit going to school. They start missing particular classes. They become secrety. They close their door a lot. They're staying up late. They're hiding their uh, their tablet. They may start cutting. If you have a child that's cutting, that's huge, okay? That's a huge sign of self-harm that they're being violated. They may stop eating or become bohemic or anorexic. They may not be able to sleep. They may start running away. They may need to get large sums of money fast, as you saw in this. They may show signs of being groomed or in a fantasy relationship. And they please, please watch for any sign of depression, withdrawal, or suicide. More important, start now, mom and dad, talking about that it is never worth it to take your own life. There is never anything so great that you working with them cannot overcome. Approach your child in a non-judgmental way. Do not wag your fingers. Don't make wild allegations. Don't uh, lay about a judgment on them. When you're calm, sit down with them and say, I see you dealing with something really heavy. Can we talk? If they can't, you can ask them, is it possible you have a photo online maybe? Not a judgmental, one of those photos, no. A photo maybe online that's giving you a problem or you know, I hope you don't, but if you do, I want you to know I'm still proud of you. I'm still here with you. You are not alone, and we're going to get through this together, and we're going to help other kids to keep from being violated. Go to your local law enforcement immediately. Take the young person and the phone, and do not alert the predator that you're doing that so that they can stand in for you, and then get counseling you're going, that child is going to need counseling. I don't care if they're 18 years old and six feet tall. They need to be able to sort through what has happened to them. Get your family counseling, husband and wife, and also be sure and get the other children in the family counseling if you can. This is how you report. Now, if you have something that is happening and it's uh, urgent, go immediately to the police department, okay? Ask for your cyber crimes unit or your sex crimes unit, whatever that they might have, and tell them that is a very serious case and needs immediate attention. Do not allow them to put you off in any way. But you can report and report anonymously at this hotline. Now, this has been a very long insider alert. They're not usually this long, but I appreciate you taking the time. This is urgent. This is important. And we need to be able to address this. If you want to write to me, write to me at opal at millionkids.org. You can uh, also support our work if you want to by donating at millionkids.org. Thank you so much, folks. Sit down with your kids and your grandkids. Share this with them. 
and we hope that it will these kids' lives will make the difference to keep future kids from harming themselves. These kids were amazing young people, and it is so sad. So let's use this opportunity for good. I'll see you next time on Insider Alerts. Thank you.